It's interesting to me how Scream 5 and Halloween Kills are the first two modern movies that I've done revisited reviews for. Mostly because they are two movies that I desperately wanted to like as a fan, but I walked out of both feeling somewhat conflicted. And I don't think I was able to fully process what I was watching in the moment. Because at that point, I held both franchises in very high regard. I didn't want to believe that these new entries were ruining the legacy of two of my favorite horror franchises. But that's exactly what they did to me, and now that I've seen Scream 5 for a second time, I can fully articulate everything about this movie that I believe doesn't work. Warning, some of these critiques may be considered toxic by modern standards, but there are things that need to be said nonetheless. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. In order for you to fully understand why I dislike this movie so much, you need to understand my hatred for the term toxic fandom. And that's not because there aren't pockets of toxic people in every fandom, but that title, that label, is typically given to the people who do not deserve it. And this is typically done either through the media, through social media, or in Scream 5's case, the people who are actually making the movie. Funny thing is, when people were recently voicing their displeasure with Halloween Ends, I saw many people on social media, and yes, even people with YouTube channels, using Scream 5's message as a weapon against disgruntled Halloween fans, all in an effort to try to dismiss their very valid criticisms. Saying, see, Scream 5 is more relevant every day. But I'm going to ask the question, is it really though? Let's analyze Scream 5's message and the killer's motive, and we'll see if they had a point here. Full disclosure, I will talk about other aspects of this film later in the video, but I wanted to start with this because I do feel like it's this film's biggest issue. That makes sense. So I want you to all think back to the original Scream trilogy. When Scream always felt like a love letter to fans of the slasher genre. And the character of Randy Meeks always felt like our representative in the film. He was the one delivering the self-aware messages about horror tropes. And Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson crafted a brilliant story around that idea. The bottom line is, is that Scream was originally intended to poke fun at movies, to poke fun at Hollywood. And it was all done from a fan perspective. Now, if you poke fun at Hollywood, you're considered toxic, but let's move on. The one thing that the original Scream movies never did was insult fans for bringing up very valid criticisms about movies. They actually embraced talking about faults in horror movie logic and storytelling. And ironically, the result was one of the greatest horror movies ever made. I feel a woozy air! Now we fast forward ahead to Scream 5, and Wes Craven's brilliance is no longer a part of this franchise, sadly. Kevin Williamson is only involved in a limited capacity, and what's the first thing that the new team, the Radio Silence team, does? They embrace an online and media orchestrated fallacy about fans. And remember, I just got done telling you that Scream was originally intended to be anti-establishment. On the flip side, Scream 5 is designed to be a soapbox that Hollywood can stand upon and spread the word about these pesky fans whose standards are a bit too high. Fans who call them out on their bull <laughs> Don't believe me? Let's look at the moment where this idea is first presented to us in the movie by Mindy Meeks. Before I say anything, I will say it does make sense for a Scream sequel to deconstruct the whole idea of a requel. Considering each movie in the Scream franchise does address different stages of horror filmmaking. Originals, sequels, trilogies, remakes, and then of course requels. However, it's the way they go about deconstructing this trend that really bothered some fans. And again, it's not the message, it's how that message is being delivered. That's usually the problem. Message! So when Mindy is breaking down the concept of a requel, she ends up going on this soliloquy about how some Stab fans in-universe didn't like the previous entry in the Stab franchise. She even draws a Star Wars comparison, of all things, insinuating that Ryan Johnson himself was the director of that Stab movie. Great, so now he's ruining real franchises and fictional franchises. She continues the Star Wars connection by saying fans on the internet are talking about how Stab 8 pissed on their childhood, about how they crammed social commentary into the franchise, how the main character is a Mary Sue. They're very subtle, aren't they? Now, all of this may have been fine if she had not continued 
by making it sound like those fans were being unreasonable. Because again, all of those things that we said about Star Wars and that we are now saying about Scream are very valid criticisms. And no amount of name calling is going to change that. In this moment, Mindy Meeks is literally taking the position of a corporate shill, who is willing and able to accept anything Hollywood gives to them, regardless of quality. She even says that the idea of requels exists because you can't change too much, otherwise fans might get upset. Now this is going under the assumption that most fans are happy with the requel trend. I myself think it sucks. I'm on record saying that I think the requel trend is already played out, and I prefer the quote-unquote inferior sequels that these movies are erasing. The scene concludes with new final girl Sam proclaiming that she's in the middle of someone's fan fiction. I'm old enough to remember a time when fan fiction was a good thing. When fans were so passionate about something, they were allowed to be creative and execute their own ideas with something that they love. And this movie feels like it very much wants you to think that's a bad thing. Basically, again, taking more shots at fandom. Fast forward to the finale and the big motive reveal. Richie and Amber are revealed to be crazy fans who didn't like Stab 8. And they spent too much time on YouTube and it radicalized them, their words, not mine, and Richie proclaims that nobody takes the fans seriously, they laugh at them, and they're all treated like a joke. He literally asks, how can fandom be toxic? Because it's all about love. They don't understand how much people love these movies. Do I really have to explain how this is blatantly mocking diehard longtime fans of any franchise? Or any fan who might not be down with a new direction for a legacy franchise? This moment really felt like they were creating a built-in excuse within the movie when people inevitably criticized Scream 5. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. Man, I'm tired of being right. You may not realize this if you don't spend a lot of time online, but this movie actually fractured the Scream fan base. At least when it happened with Star Wars, it was the result of people just having a difference of opinion about a movie, and the studio and the media created this toxic fandom narrative to shut up those people who didn't like what they did in those movies. But in Scream 5, they didn't wait for all that, and they're telling you to shut up before you even have a chance to criticize it. That's way more insulting to me. It's never a great idea for a studio to take sides and create a fandom war. And it's a shame because the Scream fandom was relatively united prior to this. When it comes right down to it, this moment in the movie was the filmmakers in the studio very blatantly saying that highly critical fans are very capable of going to these lengths to fix something that they feel like has been ruined. Literally murdering people to save a movie franchise. How is that not supposed to be insulting to at least half of your fan base? They clearly have a very low opinion of us. Me, right? The funny thing is, is that Billy and Stu in the original Scream were created to poke fun at a media-created narrative. That movies somehow inspire people to become murderers. Meanwhile, Richie and Amber were created to reinforce a media-created narrative. Do you see the difference here? Because even the not-so-crazy characters, like Mindy for instance, are embracing the toxic fandom narrative within the movie. This is exactly what made it feel like the Scream franchise sold out when Wes Craven was no longer involved. And it didn't stop there because the other major issue with this movie is the treatment of the legacy characters, which is another problem in modern Hollywood. Not only were the trailers for this movie very misleading and clearly using the core three members that we all know and love to sell this movie, which basically shows very little faith in the new cast, by the way, but what we actually got in the movie was insulting to these legacy characters. Not in my movie. Gail Weathers is a shadow of her former self, and she seems to get over the very brutal death of the love of her life pretty quickly. Dewey gets the Luke Skywalker treatment and becomes a bitter old hermit who just wants to be left alone. Oh, and he's manhandled and killed by a teenage girl also, and a very unsatisfying conclusion to his story. And then we have the queen, Sidney Prescott, relegated to a glorified cameo. 
taking a back seat to these newer, less interesting leads. Does any of this sound familiar? This type of thing happens far too often to beloved characters. Truthfully, if this is all you had for the character of Sidney Prescott, then maybe it would have been better if she's not involved at all. As for Ghostface himself or herself, I will say the kills in this movie were fine, I guess. Even if Ghostface does appear to be able to teleport at times, he disappears and reappears in places that doesn't really make sense logically. We are a long way removed from Wes Craven meticulously laying out the movements and tendencies of both Billy and Stu in that first movie, to the point that full YouTube videos have been made about that subject. And this brings me to the new characters led by sisters Sam and Tara. Word of advice, if your goal is to replace legacy characters with new characters, it might be a good idea to make those characters a bit more interesting or at least memorable, especially in a franchise that's known for great leads and great side characters. And I don't know whose decision it was to have Sam talk to the ghost of Billy Loomis, but I do believe it is one of the worst decisions in Scream history. They couldn't have accomplished that idea in a more subtle way. They had to actually show us her visions. Might it have been a better option to just show us a darker side of her personality gradually and let the audience come to the realization of who she really is? Instead of an exposition dump because she read her mom's diary? It made that moment not very impactful. I don't care! But I guess this is what happens when you have incompetent writers trying to fill very big shoes. And I'm just gonna say, I know Jenna Ortega is the hype girl at the moment, and I'll admit she probably would have been a better choice as the lead of this franchise moving forward, but I found the character of Tara to be pretty bland as well. I think they're trying too hard with the character of Tara, especially when they make her the only person to survive an opening kill in a Scream movie. Because all that really did was show me that your ghost face is kind of weak. And yes, this is by far, in my opinion, the weakest ghost face in the franchise. Both from a character, motive, and reveal perspective. It was very predictable to me. To this day, I actually still second guess the killers in Scream 2 because they were so well hidden. I can't say the same thing for Scream 5. When it comes right down to it, Scream 5 just doesn't feel like a Scream movie to me. It feels like Scream in name only. And if it was called anything else, it probably would be a decent slasher movie. But Scream used to be smart, scary, intelligent, and of course, darkly humorous, as well as a love letter to fans. To me, Scream 5 completely abandons the tone and feel of the franchise, in an effort to desperately set itself apart from the pack. They tried to take a more serious approach this time around, and it just didn't work because that's not exactly what Scream is. Gone is the Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson added charm, and what we got instead is a dull, lifeless, disrespectful, and insulting attempt to quote, introduce this franchise to a new generation. It's amazing to me that every time they try to introduce an old franchise to new people, it always comes at a price. That being the disrespect of legacy characters and longtime fans. And Scream 5 is worse because it's the most blatant and obvious example of that. That's why Scream 5 is getting the angry Rocky. That's right, it stinks! Y'all be cool. Right on.